Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Trail Makers. I almost did a scrap mechanic because I'm in uh, a familiar vehicle if you guys are following the scrap mechanic survival series. So someone actually made a replica of my main survival vehicle. This is the vehicle that I go out to loot and scout and occasionally take down bosses. And yeah, I think they did an excellent job at replicating everything that's in here. It also has some functional pieces. So of course we got the gun on the front. I mean, mine has uh, five guns in the front, but the guns here take up a lot more space than the guns in Scrap Mechanics, so it's understandable that he was able to fit just two in here. Uh, and then, of course, we have our boss launcher, uh, sometimes a bot launcher, and then we can activate the wheels on that. Now, I don't know if these wheels are actually going to work on something, but I figured that we would spawn something in and actually give it a try. And you can see we got the drills on the wheels and on the front, and we got the saw blades on the back. Uh, he even put the spare wheels up on the top there. Yeah, good job interpreting this vehicle into different build mechanics and different build parts. So let's spawn in something else and we'll see if the wheels actually do anything. That creation was made by Finnick, by the way, and it was called Scrapman Survival Car. Oh, you know what? Let's actually just use Buster here. Buster will be our hay bot. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of a bot in the first place. Let's go ahead and activate the wheels. I don't think wheels behave the same way in trail makers like they do in scrap mechanics, so I'm not... Yeah, I'm, I wasn't expecting it to really work, but I don't think that they really have friction against, like, other blocks, like the way that they do in Scrap Mechanic. But hey, we destroyed it. If, uh, if Hulkbuster there was a boss bot, then we have successfully killed the boss bot, so that's something. All right, up next, I don't know what to expect with this thing. The shape is extremely interesting, but it is called Super Helicopter by Bookworm. Now, the reason this caught my attention is, well, first of all, the term super helicopter makes me curious why it's a super helicopter. And secondly, uh, the fact that there are rotor blades on the bottom and then on the top of the helicopter intrigues me. And I want to see, does this thing even work? It looks really cool. It looks like a, some type of race car, honestly. It looks, looks really awesome. All right, number one. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting number one to do that. Oh, okay. Whoops. Um, A, D. All right. So we got... All of our fins kind of work together to do both the roll and the pitch. All right, number one. Whoa. This is way more stable than I expected it to be. This is kind of crazy. This is a really unique helicopter design. And it's also, it's more of like a VTOL than a helicopter. This thing flies great. I am really impressed with how easy this thing is to fly. Even upside down, it works all right. Oh, oh, get off the ground. There we go. All right, let's just go through here. There we go. Let's turn around and go through the next one over here. Gonna go through that middle one on the left. Perfect, nailed it. I'm surprised it like, it lifts off so quick. I thought it was gonna break itself sometimes on the takeoff, but nope, it seems to do just fine. So here, let's actually go in for a landing. If we go down like this, will this work the way that you would expect it to? I gotta kind of turn them off in order to go down. And that makes it behave a little bit weird sometimes. And there we go. Nice and soft landing. No damage at all. That is such a weird design. I like it though. It totally works. Very well done. All right, up next, uh, this was for one of the Trailmakers challenges. If you guys weren't aware and you have Trailmakers, uh, join their Discord because they have weekly challenges uh, and you just gotta build stuff and you can win things for the weekly challenge. So apparently this is for the movie scene challenge and this is a beach movie scene by just a lonely guy. So there's a bunch of buttons here. I'm just gonna press them to see what happens. All right, check this out. Oh, really well done with the sand using that weird texture for the sand that actually works really, really well. And we got the green screen in the back. We got a volleyball court with a net here we got palm trees we got the the beach chairs a towel with an umbrella next to a fire uh we got this seat we got this seat all right so this is the one that we got to use top of seat camera on all right there we go top of seat camera all right so we are cameraman right now we can go ahead and shoot our beach scene uh let's see q oh okay so oh we got our we're tracking on like the dolly thing here it's not the smoothest tracking. <laughs> not the smoothest tracking. Might be a couple of glitches in the uh, footage here. All right, number one. Oh, oh, it's bright. All right, that might be a little bit too excessive on the green screen there. Here, let me um, let me take a look. So that just activates 
all of the lights, it looks like. Oh, and they turn in. That's pretty cool. All right, so that's number one. Number two, more lights. Where are these lights coming from? Oh, they're coming from up. Okay, that's cool. Uh, J and K. Well, I heard something. Oh! It's recording. Action! I forgot to say action. All right, so we're gonna get ready for this movie scene. All right, so the cameras are rolling. All right, everyone in their places. All right, and action! <laughs> that, okay, that didn't quite work as well as I thought it was going to. I'm stuck. I'm stuck on the beach. Let's try it again. Maybe if I put my wheels down, it'll help out. All right, and action! Oh, no. Hey, the camera survived. That's all we need. We got the footage. We got everything we need. Fantastic. All right, so that's our epic uh, beach action scene. So let's move on to another creation. All right, up next, this is this looks like a monster of a vehicle, and there's some weird stuff going around with the hood here. This is the corroded Dodge Power Wagon 6x6 Monster by Laser Tomahawk. Apparently, it's based off of a real car, the Dodge Power Wagon 6x6. I had no idea. That's quite the name for a car, isn't it? <laughs> Apparently, it's kind of designed to be like a horror movie car where it like shakes and is like, it's actually like a corroded mess. Oh, oh, look at that. That's interesting. This is really cool though. This is a really nice looking car. Oh, look at all that weight on the bottom too. There's some pretty interesting stuff going. There's a lot of suspension on this. There's suspension going into suspension. This is a pretty crazy. Oh, look at the lights. The lights are flickering. All right, H for horn. That is not the horn button. I see the horn, but that is definitely, <laughs> it's not the horn button. E for horn? That is also not the horn button. What? This is crazy. This is like it could eat something. Why, what is, that's weird. There's some weird stuff going on in here. It looks like it wants to swim. It's like a swimming motion almost. Space? Space is the horn. Okay, all right, let's drive around and see what it's like. Oh, it's got some power to it. I, I don't think we're gonna go fast enough to make the loop though, but maybe if we toot our horn loud enough, it'll work. Can confirm, uh, horn loudness does not help with the loop. All right, well, this is definitely a somewhat terrifying vehicle. I dig the corrupted nature of it. And uh, let's go ahead and leave that there. Maybe we can destroy it with uh, something else. All right, I don't think I have anything with guns, but we do have another truck that I don't, maybe it isn't corrupted, who knows? This is uh, the Peter Builds 379 by a name that I cannot read. Apparently this is this person's second truck. So let's go ahead and see how it does and we'll ram it into the corrupted truck and we can see if we can uh, get rid of the curse that is the corrupted truck here. Oh man, this thing looks so good. Like sometimes there is, sometimes there are builds that make you forget that this is a, blocky gridded system that we build on in this game. Like this almost looks like either none of that is even here. But man, this is such a good looking truck. All right, let's push buttons and see what happens. All right, let's do space first. All right, space is the horn button for these vehicles apparently. Uh, Q and E are lights. Look at all those lights. That is a lot of lights. Is that normal? Left control? Oh. Whoa, all right. That was pretty cool. I like that. And that's it. Oh no, this thing is not fast. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if this one's gonna cut it. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get rid of the, the corruption with this thing, but let's uh, use this to give ourselves a little bit of a speed boost. Wow, look at that speed boost. Such boost, much speed. Wow. All right, here we go. We're, we're gonna end this corruption once and for all. Um, it appears we have done zero damage to the actual corrupted vehicle and we've lost we've lost the whole side of our front end here. Did you guys notice how tall the exhaust pipes are? That seems a little bit excessive, doesn't it? All right, come on, do some damage. All right, once again, it looks like we've done zero damage to the corrupted vehicle and now our entire engine compartment is exposed. All right, if we do it a third time, It'll probably be the charm. I've heard such things in the past before, so let's see if those words hold true. Hey! 
We actually did damage that time. All right, we're getting there. We knocked two wheels off, actually. I thought it was only one wheel, but it looks like we did two. Oh, here we go. That was a decent hit. I approve of that hit. Can we circle back around? Yeah, we do have some decent power, all things considered. There we go, into the rock wall. All right, you know, I think we've done enough damage. I think, I think we've showed him who's boss and uh, he's probably gonna leave us alone now. Oh, and by the way, this is 699 out of 700 complexity, which is pretty impressive. All right, up next, uh, this looks like a pretty fun and cool creation. This is the Hydrolite by Macquarium. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. It's an easy to fly Hydrolite. Um, the way he says that makes me think it's probably a real thing. It's compatible with first person camera. Oh, and it was made for Scrapman. By the way, I'm not actually searching for my name when I'm looking in the workshop. So like this doesn't actually, this doesn't really increase your chances. Just so you know. But I do appreciate that you had me in mind when you were building it. All right, let's get into first person here. Top of seat. Oh yeah, first person, here we go. So space, here, let's see. It looks like we just got two propellers. All right, and we're lifting off. And here we are. I wish, uh, if Trailmaker devs are watching, I really kind of wish that, whoa, there's my nose. <laughs> I really wish that when you were in first person, you could still use the mouse to look around. So that'd be kind of nice if you could just look around from this first person perspective. All right, this thing is nice to fly. This is a very relaxing ride. I kind of feel like I want to stay close to the ground because I can't look down when I'm going up. All right, let's see if we can, here, let's go into third person now. All right, so I'm gonna try my best to come in here for a nice first person landing, which might be kind of difficult because I'm not gonna be able to see my wheels. So I don't know when I'm actually going to be able to hit the, gr or when I'm going to be approaching the ground, but let's see what we can do here. All right, here, oh no, this is already bad. Good start, let's try that again. All right, here we are. We're on a much straighter trajectory this time. I'm gonna try not to mess up. Oh boy. Oh boy, here we go, here we go, here we go. We're nailing it, we're nail- Get up, get up, <laughs> just don't tip over. <laughs> All right, that wasn't the uh, the smoothest landing or the most unfrightening landing, but we are alive. And it looks like we didn't even break anything. So that's always a bonus. All right, up next, we're gonna be looking at what is claiming to be a hydrofoil, a Gemini Nymph by only mostly here. It is a hydrofoil jet boat capable of speeds approaching 230 kilometers an hour. It is an absolute pig to steer. I, does that mean bad? I don't think I've heard the word pig used in a sentence like this before. So I'm just gonna assume it's bad. Also no reverse, which I guess makes kind of sense. Oh, apparently we can deploy the hydrofoils with left shift. All right, let's see. Let's get a feel for what's going on here on land. Wait, what? Oh, those hydrofoil, I thought it was gonna like come out from underneath, but it's very, very subtle. Here, look at the, let's look again. I'm gonna press shift. Okay, so it's just the fins on the sides tilt up a little bit, and that's what's gonna keep it in the water, or uh, on top of the water, I guess. Here, let's go into the water. Do we float? Oh, we float really nicely. All right, so deploy hydrofoils and go. Look at that, we're getting up on top of the water here. This is so nice. I look, the water effects are great for this kind of creation. All right, and there's the steering. Whoa! I When he said steering was a pig, this is not what I had in mind. This actually, it's super smooth. It glides, I thought we were gonna like tilt and maybe like dive into the water accidentally, like get unstable or something, but no, this is amazing. Yeah, this is a really nice hydrofoil. It glides so well across the water. All right, let's go straight. He said, what, 230? Let's see if we can get up to 230. All right, we're approaching 215, 220, 225. Oops, I missed up my camera. 228, 229, almost there. Come on, you can do it, you can do it, please. Just 230, 230. There we go, 230. I was like, am I gonna have to call this person a liar? Oh. That's what I thought was gonna happen when I turned. Apparently, if you turn at max speed like that, that's when you mess up. But hey, uh, just repairing in the water is fine. And that's what happens if you don't activate your hydrofoils. How did we break? Oh, I guess I got kicked out of the seat and hit my own vehicle. All right, hydrofoils activated. I actually just realized now that this isn't even a water seat. 
Like this is a this is a regular air uh, aircraft cockpit, so that means if you go underwater, you fall out. So that's actually even more impressive that it's it's reliable enough that you can have a seat that is not waterproof while driving on top of the water. All right, so I have uh, one more vehicle for you guys, and this one I'm really really curious about because it is called an all-purpose vehicle. And whoa, we're flying. <laughs> This isn't it. This isn't supposed to be the all-purpose vehicle, just in case you were wondering. So, an all-purpose vehicle, I made one a long, long time ago, and it's actually one of my most popular Trailmakers videos. And I spent a lot of time making that vehicle, but it was a vehicle that could, if I can remember correctly, it could drive like a car, it could hover like a hovercraft, it could wall climb, it could go underwater, and there was another one. that it, Oh, and fly, of course, it could fly as well. So it was like truly an all-purpose vehicle. So let's see if this all-purpose vehicle, where is it? Right here. It's all-purpose vehicle version two. Apparently it can drive, submerge, hover, wall climb, and fly. Just like I said. He's worked on this build for, did I write this description? What? <laughs> All right, let's see, uh, let's see how it works. And for those old school fans of the channel, you can uh, compare it with your memories of my vehicle from back in the day. All right, so far, it definitely looks a it definitely looks a little bit different. It has somewhat of a different shape, but there's a lot of controls. Oh wow, this actually drives really, really nice. Okay. Uh space. Okay, I really I do not know what to expect with this. Uh up and down. Whoa, what is this doing? Oh, this must be wall climb mode right here. That must activate the hover glitch to do some wall climbing. So let's see, let's see. The loop will be a good way to test wall climbing. So now that I've activated that, let's see if we can just drive on up. Look at that. Oh, oh, okay. All right, well, it didn't say ceiling climbing, so I'll give it the benefit of the doubt here unless I haven't fully uh, figured out the controls yet. Okay, so control is to activate and deactivate the hover pads. All right, what about T? There we go, there's hover mode. Uh, we're gonna have to use space for hover mode. All right, that's interesting. It, like, it feels like my back propellers might be dragging on the ground a little bit for hover mode. All right, what about, let's go T again. So it's a similar transformation mechanism that mine had from driving to hover. All right, I think that's all the controls. So before we go in the water, let's test out the flying. If I just go off a jump here, am I able to fly? Oh, well. Would you look at that? What if I turn off hover pads? Does that make it easier? I don't actually know. Oh boy, it is a heavy, it is a heavy car though. I'm having a lot of trouble staying up in the air with this one. All right, what if I activate the hover pads and then activate wall climb? Okay, that does that. That's not good, that's not good. Well, we're a submarine too anyway. So let's go ahead and test out the submarine powers. Okay, well, we're on the bottom. Um, I think we should be able to get up, but right now, I don't think we can actually pitch up because we're on the bottom. So here, I got an idea. Let's, uh, spawn over in the water. That way we'll spawn on top of the water. Yeah, see? Yeah, now I can pitch up. Yeah, we have, we have full control here. It actually has really nice control in the water compared to the air. Alright, let's see if we can transition out of the water and into the air. Alright, there we go, and... Go, go, go! I don't know if we can do this. Go! <laughs> we don't have enough speed. Go! You can do it! Oh, we're doing it! We're doing it! We're doing oh, it! is so difficult. It just can't get enough speed, it looks like. Alright, actually, I wonder then, what was the hover mode? Let's transition into hover mode. Let's see if we can get on top of the water. There we go, there we go. Yeah! And then from here, from hovering on top of the water, then can we fly? I'm trying. There we go. All right, I think maybe hover mode is the ideal mode for flying, perhaps. All right, but I do have to put this wall climbing to the test just a little bit more. So here, let's go over here. All right, this looks like a good test spot right here. All right, come on, you can do it. Oh wow, look at that. Wall climber confirmed. It is definitely a wall climber. All right, so this actually got me curious for nostalgia's sake. Can I actually find my all-purpose vehicle? That was such a, oh, here it is. I think this is it. Does it still work? Mine's definitely much bigger, a lot bigger. And I have no idea 
how... Okay, apparently you use arrows to fly with. Q and E. I think this is wall climber mode right now. Left control is to turn those off. Uh, space to do that. P and what? P? Oh, that doesn't look right. I don't... That Why doesn't that work anymore? Why? Oh, there we go. That's why. P is supposed to be something I'm not supposed to press. Do not press P. So Y is to transform into hover mode. Wow. All right, and is this also flight mode? Yeah, so hover mode and flight mode are the same. All right, here we go. We're hovering now. And let's see if I can take off. Come on. Ugh, there we go, take off. All right, we're flying. We got flight mode down. And is this also submarine mode? I don't know what submarine mode even is. Um, oh, okay, apparently we go forward like that and we still use these to turn and stuff. All right, come on, get up on top of the water. I don't think we can get out of the water. Yeah, I, are, I remembered submarine mode was always the weakest mode on this one. Yeah, so it looks like mine cannot get out of the water, so his definitely has the advantage on that. I feel like mine's a little bit easier to fly, so at least I got that going for me. So yeah, that was kind of nice to revisit the whole all-purpose, all-terrain vehicle concept. So good job on making it much smaller and compact than I was able to. So let me know which one of these creations was your favorite in this video. And don't forget, if you want to see more amazing creations, I've looked at hundreds of them in this series. So go ahead and check that out on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.